and Tangella too. And our host, Vincent Van Dahl. And he brings it to ya! Creature features! And all creatures! How many times have I told you to refrain from engaging in wages with this one? <sighs> you know, perfectly well, she always cheats, especially with her three-card Monty game. And what might you had won had she not bested you? She said she would pack up her suitcase and move back to Los Angeles. You should have known perfectly well there is no place with enough room in that city with enough space for her and her beastly menagerie. Perhaps... San Diego, with their impressive zoo, might suffice. Onward. Welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent. The poorly made-up bloke in the salon chair would be my bet-losing butler, Mr. Livingston. And the ragamuffin adaptation of Max Factor would be my card-trick hustling housemate, Tangella. And we have a most stupendous program in store just for you. First up, we'll take in a fabulous film from 1957 entitled... The Pharaoh's Curse. Starring Mark Dana, Ziva Rodan, and Diane Brewster, this is a simply marvelous movie about a crazed Egyptian killing off members of an archaeological expedition. And I can say with some authority that this picture is far better than any of the Universal Mummy movies. No, it is not. Shh. And joining us to watch this King Tut extravaganza will be our old friend, graphic designer, and mummy expert, Larry Lee Moniz. He's a well-known champion of this film and knows absolutely everything there is to know about its production. In fact, I'm told that he operates the only known fan club in the world for this movie. He'll give us some insights into how the film was made, tell us what he has been up to as of late, and show us some of the creations he's made for his new fashion website. So don't go away, for it is to be another night of mummified fright, right here on Creature Features. You don't pay me enough for this. Actually, I don't pay Tangella enough for this. Stay tuned. It's that time of the week. You know, I'm going to write this song. It's, it's going to be called Creature Features Welcome. I love it. No, it's terrible. It's a, it's a dumb idea. Welcome to the show. It's a Saturday night. Time for Creature Features. And we've got Larry Lee Moniz. Hi, everybody. Yeah. So, you know, we're trying to, to figure out when the last time you were on. And you said it was two years. It was close to two years ago, yeah. No, I don't think wild. so. I seem to remember you being here last month. Hmm. I was wandering around aimlessly, kind of just, you know, looking around. No, we had like, we, we booked, <laughs> no, we had booked some star, mm -hmm. and then they could not make it, and then we called you instead, and you filled in, and then the star was dead. Wow. And it's not like the star died after we booked. The, the star was already dead. Oh, But oh. this bloke booked this person Somebody. on our show, and they're dead. You know, we need to look at the obituaries. I Prior think. to booking guests, I think. That's, <laughs> no, that's the way to do it, right? Wow. I think that's a smart way to go. No, we're not going to bring a dead person on here. You're alive. Um, I've been mistaken for dead a few times. No, but, I uh, don't believe you. No, yeah. you look quite alive. Thank you. Anyways, uh, Pharaoh's Curse. I understand you know everything about this film. Um, I know a little bit about this film. Oh, yeah. I think you know more than... He's, he's being humble. He knows quite a bit. 
You're like an expert on this film. Oh, I, I don't know if I'd say I'm an expert mm -hmm. on this film. Mm -hmm. I, like I said, I've got a few right. facts. Well, when he's not being an expert on this film, you're an expert on sci-fi and cosplay and going to conventions mm -hmm. and things like that, right? Yeah. And, and you, you've got this new thing going on with graphics that you're doing. Because yeah. that's what you typically do. That's your day job, right? Yeah, my day job is a graphic, graphic. designer. And uh, I've been doing that for about right. 21 years. So would you say your language is graphic as well? Uh, it can be, but I'm right. going to try to tone it down for the show tonight. No, it's important. It's a family show. It is a family show. A Friday show. Ah. It's a different story. That's true. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, there was like a, a film we showed and there was boobs. <laughs> <laughs> it was terrible. No, we, we received many complaints. But the Friday show is a different thing. It's kind of, you know, anything goes. I like Friday. it, though. I enjoy the Friday it's, show. It's different. Yeah. It's different. We've got better movies, at least, so that's what counts. All right, Pharaoh's Curse, 1957. Let's go ahead and stop that one. Sounds when we good. come back, you're going to tell us absolutely everything about this film, right? Um, okay. Because I know nothing. <laughs> Literally nothing about this film. All right, off we go, Pharaoh's Curse. See you on the other side of the break. Hello YouTube viewers, have you subscribed yet? I see a few of you have forgotten to do so. I am somewhat disappointed. Please subscribe. Thank you. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we are watching The Pharaoh's Curse, 1957, with the expert on this movie, Larry Lee Moniz. You know, this film, how, how many years did they spend working on this particular project? Well, the actual outside scenes were all filmed in Death Valley in only one day. One bloody day. One day, yeah. That's incredible. What yeah. about the rest? The entire movie only took six days. Six days. Six days for Six the whole thing. Six days to film this epic, yep. this, this, this wondrous epic. <laughs> My goodness. Yeah, Death Valley, they filmed in Death Valley. Death Valley. You know, Tangela talked me into taking her to Death Valley once, and she was most disappointed because she saw no death. <laughs> she was expecting to see the Valley of Death, because mm. it's Death Valley, right? right valley right. of Death, right? Yeah. Not one. She's Nothing probably dead. She's probably hoping to find some skulls to take home, I'm guessing. Yeah. No, all we found was this dry lake with these rocks with tracks behind them. <laughs> no, the, the rocks, wow. are, they move. They move. And they create tracks. No, look, you should Google it. Have you tried Google? I, I've heard of it. No, I should you try should it try someday. Google, look up information, and, and go Death Valley moving rocks mm, okay. and look into this it's an amazing you you do this at home as well it's an amazing phenomenon <laughs> no and we, we saw this close up i i would dig up a photo but uh, i'm gonna know, have to try that I, I need to find a way to organize my photos mm. no I, I i can never find a photo it's like show me a picture of death valley rocks and it shows me some band from the 80s <laughs> called Death Valley Rocks. I, no, it's terrible. Oh, Death Valley Rocks. Right. Like, yeah, no, it's yeah. terrible. It's terrible. So um, this film, uh, you know, I noticed that Pharaoh is spelt differently than I expected. <laughs> Did you think it no. was spelled with an F? No, I thought Pharaoh was P-H-A-R-R-O-H. -R -R mm -hmm. And there's a A in there. Am I pronouncing it wrong as well? Uh, I think you're okay. Um, I think they just decided to spell it a little different to be unique. In this film, or just film. oh, all right. Yeah. So that's I not think, how you normally spell Pharaoh. I don't think it is. Yeah, I think you're. I think you're right. Right, yeah. right, right. So, King Tut was a pharaoh, right? King Tut was a pharaoh. So Pharaoh just means king. Yes. All right. See, you learn something every day on Creature Features, do you not? The more you know. I certainly did. All right, let's say we get back to the film. Okay. All right, back to the Pharaoh's Curse, and then uh, we're going to uh, do some mail, right? Because that's what we do. All right, off we go. See you on the other side of the break.
Welcome back to the show. If you're just joining us, you're a bit late, but that's that's all right. We'll forgive you this time. And uh, he he lost a bet. That's that's why he looks like that. No more betting her, right? No. No, I can show you how to win that that trick. How? It's 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 how it's done. I can show you how it's done. I know. I taught her how to do that trick. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Anyways, uh, Larry stepped away for a moment. He went to get something from his vehicle. Well, I think it's a thing. Something that he's created, I think. No, I don't think so. I think it's something he did not create, but it's something he wants to show us for show and tell. Because we do that here. You know that. Show and tell. Show and tell. But right now, we're going to show and tell mail from you, our friends at home, because you send us mail, and it's our obligation to look at it and read it, right? Right. What do you got for me, sir? So I'm not sure where they're from. But he seems to be very Scottish. He does not say where he's from, but let's find out what he has to say. Oh, he's got a picture of himself in a Scottish gear. Let's put mm -hmm. that up. Let's put up a picture of this bloke. This is uh, Dana Brigham, whose who's nom de plume is Angus McNaughton. Angus so McNaughton. Maybe he's from Scotland. Perhaps he is. All right. He goes, uh, love your show. Grew up watching Count Gordeval on UHF Channel 20 in Washington, D.C. Creature feature and, frankly, the hijinks of the Count, Dick Dizel, were generally more entertaining than many of the movies. I met him a few times at the local sci-fi conventions. Similarly, I tune into your creature features for more of your house breaks than the movies, though you have shown some interesting films I have not seen. So I told you people would like these oddball movies. Really? She likes them. Well, she likes everything. Yeah, you know, I'm having a tough time speaking to you with the red nose and the green hair. Yeah, next time he loses a bet, maybe you could just dress him up as a girl. I don't know what this is supposed Please. to be. Please. That's terrible. All right, uh, the interactions between you, Tangela Livingston, and the crew, Paul Andrew, and guests are great. Tangela's facial reactions are identical to my 20-year-old daughter. You know, if you've got a 20-year-old daughter that makes faces like her, I pity your soul, sir. Danger. No words are needed, and I love the shorts where she is out and about at the local attractions and occasionally bringing some souvenirs back to the mansion. Keep on doing what you're doing, Dana Brigham, or Angus, as he's better known. You know, he's got nice legs. I mean, for, for a Scottish guy with a dress. You, it's his kilt. I know it's a bloody kilt. I own one. So does he. But he owns Lederhosen. You should see him in that. Texas. Texas. So it would appear. Texas. All right. Uh, Katie, Chuck Texas. in Katy, Texas. Not Katy and Chuck, Texas. This is Chuck in Katy, Texas. That's a nice name for a town. Hello to you, Vincent Livingston and Tangent. Tangent. Was, no, it was, it was autocorrect, I bet. He, he typed Tangela and his, his thing changed it to Tangent. But she is often on a tangent, is she not? I watch your show almost every night on YouTube and do find some of the movies to be boring. But every now and then you do show a good one. In any case, the three of you are still very entertaining, even if the movie is not. I always wonder about Tangent. Are you and her relatives? No. How did you come to be together? And is the show really shot in your home mansion or just a Hollywood movie set? Uh, no, we actually live here. And uh, how did... She, she just showed up at the door one day, but not here at my other locale. That was in Beverly Hills. That was in Beverly Hills. So yeah, she's, she's originally and from she Los won't go away. Angeles. No, she'll go away someday. When, when we finally marry her off, she'll go mm, away. That will not happen. No. Well, if she'd stop killing her suitors, that would, would settle everything. All right. Love your show. God bless you all in long life and love. Well, same to you, Chuck and Katie, Texas. And uh, let us know how the weather is down there, eh? Next up, Mr. Livingston. How did this get here? I oh, don't it's know. been there the they, whole time. They keep right. appearing. I, I just noticed it. Las Vegas, Nevada. Las Vegas, Nevada. And there's a picture of a thing. Two well, things. No, it's one thing. Stereoscopic photo. I'll, I'll explain. Uh, this is from Jennifer Stein in Las Vegas. She goes, my family loves the decorations made by Tangella. She's probably talking about the uh, Halloween episode we recently showed. 
Perhaps. Where she had all the pumpkins and she did all the things. And the doll heads, those had kind of a new thing, right? And the lights. And the lights. All right, so she did an amazing job parking, uh, carving the pumpkins. I usually end up in bandages. My crocodile loves seeing a fellow reptile on TV. That's because you got the gift thing, the white crocodile. We found the movie delightfully weird, and that movie would have been Love at First Bite. Yeah, are you telling me you've never seen this film before, Love at First Bite? You know, there's a lot of people that night that did not see it mm. prior. So uh, we did something nice that night. Um, let's see. It will definitely be watched more often. We'll also be subscribing to Tangela's page. That's right. Tangela has her own YouTube now. You got to make some more clips. It's just a couple of clips. She, so she, she like directs what we clip and then she gives them to people to manage the page and cut them up. So she doesn't know how to edit video. We have to have professionals do it. I included a copy of a stereoscopic photo that I took. The skull will be three-dimensional when viewed correctly. Here's a stereoscopic picture over here. It's a skull. That's actually nicely done. We need one of those. We have one up in the attic, do we not? One of those stereoscopic where you place the picture inside and it's got the lens. I'm not sure what that's called. It's a stereoscopic viewer. Well, in, in, in America, they used to call them the GAF Viewmaster. But... Mm -hmm. This, this, that requires the round discs, and we mm -hmm. don't have those. Uh, to see it in 3D, it needs to be printed to scale to roughly the size of an index card. Trim it so there's a border on the left and right side for your thumbs. Hold the picture against your nose and stare straight ahead. Oh, so she's saying I could do it without the thing. Oh, right, I see. Now, and I, I can smell this paper it's printed on, too. It smells nice. You're serious, aren't you? That's what she says. <laughs> Hold the picture to your stare straight ahead. Slowly move the photo back until you see three images. The middle image will be three-dimensional. Hopefully, you enjoy the photo. Sincerely, Jennifer Stein from Las Vegas. Well, thank you so much, Jennifer. Thanks for watching the show, and uh, hope you are keeping cool in Las Vegas. This Any one more? from Nigeria. Nigeria. That's a lovely place. Have you ever been? Yes, I have, actually. It's, it, it's, they speak Nigerian in Nigeria, do they not? Very good, sir. Mm. What else would they speak? Swahili. Swahili. All right, this is from Mark Mbutu in Sokoto, Nigeria. We've heard from Mark before, have we not? Sounds he familiar. Sounds, yeah, it does sound familiar. A dear Splendorious recipient, I write to you today to make good offer from Kaduna, Nigeria. My sister has husband who is treasure keeper for large eastern province. He wished to make special business deal just for you. If you send 500 American dollars to PayPal address below, he make bank check for you back at sum of 50 million Nigeria Naira. How much money is that? About $40. Oh, all right. Mr. Sir, this is most seriousness. Please for your reply today. Um, no. Right. And there we have it. There we go. That's it for mail. If you'd like to send us mail of your own by email, send it to the address you see right here. Or if you'd like to send something in the mail using postage, delivery men, diesel trucks, and possibly Air France, use the address you see right here. We'll be uh, right back after the next break. But first, let's get back to the Pharaoh's Curse. <laughs> Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to Creature Features, and uh, we have a creature tonight, a scorpion. That's right. You know, a lot of times people complain because we have a show entitled Creature Features, and we, we don't show a creature of any kind. And tonight we've got a scorpion. A so. legit creature, a right. real live creature. I suppose a mummy would be a creature as well. Yeah, no? if it's moving, yeah. 
What's the, what's, what's the denoting factor of a creature? Four um, legs, six I, legs, four or more legs. <laughs> a stinger. Uh, could be a stinger. A it's stinger. definitely a factor. Yeah. I read that the scorpion is like a bee sting. Really? The oh. scorpion dies after it stings? Is that, is no, that not it necessarily is? dies, but oh. it's like as far as your skin, the skin condition it gives you oh. is like a bee, bee sting. Interesting. Yeah. I'm not going to test this theory <laughs> at all, no, because that would be silly. What in God's name is this robot doing on my table? Well, um, there was an interesting fact about this movie. Um, the set designer in this movie is a, is a guy named Bob Kinoshita. Bob Kinoshita, I've heard yes. that name before. Yep, Bob Kinoshita also worked on a movie in uh, 1956 you might have heard of called Forbidden Planet. Absolutely, I love that film. And Bob was the set decorator, and also um, he worked on the space cruiser spaceship, which is a, uh, you know, a spaceship from you know the the Earth. It looks like a you know UFO. Right, but what's it got to do with this film? Well, I mean, Bob Bob worked on this film as well. He he was the what set did designer. Do? Did he design the Scorpion? He <laughs> he just he probably designed like the hieroglyphics and the tomb oh, and nice. and the sets and everything. So yeah, yeah he did all that. Yeah. But uh, he most famously though in Forbidden Planet, he also designed. Robbie the robot, probably the world's most famous right. robot. Right. No, yeah, it is. And uh, yeah, and uh, and uh, he also about I think less than a decade later, uh, Bob worked with Irwin Allen uh, for CBS, and he worked on Lost in Space to make the Jupiter Two, the interiors, and that uh, spaceship. I see where you're going with this. And also, he made he, this guy he, right you know, here. You know, we had this guy right here, a larger version of him, on the show. <laughs> That's right. Some time back, and yeah. no, he was, he was quite humorous. Made by Eric Yee. Eric Yee is awesome. Eric Yee. It was episode 174, if you want to look it up. It's, actually it's did. worth no, watching. Right where you're standing, we had the big version. He, he would not shut up. <laughs> he was the most chatty mechanism I'd ever seen. I was going to call him a bubble-headed booby, but I knew, I knew how he'd react to that, so I did not. <laughs> no, no, none of that. So, um, Kinoshita, he's, he's, mm -hmm. he's not with us anymore. No, I think he passed away in, I believe it was 2013 or 14, oh, somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah. He was 100 years old, though. Bob Kinoshita, years old. Bob Kinoshita lived to be 100 years old. Oh, my and goodness. Yeah, toward the Imagine. later part of his life, he got a lot of recognition for his earlier works, fi finally. Right. He was kind of overlooked for a long time. No, but he had nothing to do with that recent uh, Lost in Space program. No, nothing. No, no not, not a thing. No. Yeah, no. the robot on that. I mean, it's interesting, but it's not this... This yeah. is lovable. He is lovable. The robot on that, that series, I, I don't know. Kind of mean. Yeah. It was mean. Yeah. And it, it wasn't even a man-made thing. It was like uh, Alien, right? It was an alien robot. Yeah, that's right. So, how, how did they get licensed to make a departure like that? You I mean, know, if you're um, call it Lost in Space, do it right. I kind of agree with you. I've always wanted to see a big movie version that was closer to the TV version. But they, yes. had, that, they had that one in 1998. I didn't care for that one at all. You know, had they named it something else? Huh? Had they called it Space Family Robinson, or not even Robinson, just called it Space Family. That would have been a fine film and it would have been well received. Probably. But by calling it Lost in Space, <laughs> yeah. you know, I don't think programs, new programs, should use the old name. Says, it, says the man who does a show called Creature Features. <laughs> no, no, no. All right, so take that back. It's all right. Oh. Use the old name. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's, it's all right. No, I, I actually like that film. Did you? The 1998 one? I, I like the robot in that. The robot was okay. And Dick Tufeld actually did the voice. He was he the He was man. the guy. No, no, no. They just tweaked it a bit. Mm -hmm. They made him sound more evil and menacing. Yes. All right. What do you say we get back to the Pharaoh's Curse? Okay. All right. Let's off we go back to the Pharaoh's Curse, 1957. Uh, don't go away because Tangela is going to do something absolutely ridiculous when we come back. Hello, Vincent and Tangela. This is Dan from Morristown, Arizona. Your show is great. I just discovered it this year. I was wondering if you could show the movie Devil Bat with Bella Lugosi. That'd be a great one to see. Thanks and keep up the good work.
Despite my previous protestation, I see a few of you have still not subscribed to our YouTube channel yet. Please, I implore of you to do so. Thank you. Cat Trail. The cat. the cat. There's a cat in this movie. It seems that there's a cat in this movie by footprints, but I don't think we, I never saw a cat in this movie. It's, it's kind of weird. They didn't actually show one, but they showed cat prints. Cat prints. Bizarre. Maybe it's, it's the beginning of a Meow Mix commercial that went bad. <laughs> it's possible. I it is know. possible. Anything's possible. Welcome back to the show. If you're just joining us, you're quite late. They should probably switch over to something else, right? <laughs> if you're just well, joining. What's on tonight? Saturday yeah. Night Live. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that show even any funny anymore? Uh, it hasn't been funny for, for I, I believe, about 17 years. 17 yeah. years? It's been a while. Yeah, no. Yeah. Well, you, they, there's some good talent that comes. I, I think what happens is they take comedians that are no good, mm -hmm. and they refine them, and then... They spit out good comedians. It's like a it's like a comedian factory. It is, but they they do not use the talented ones <laughs> while they're on the show. They they're only talented after they leave. It's a theory. I could be wrong. I think some of I'm them even lose wrong. their talent when they leave after a while too. That's possible. Yeah, That's, it doesn't last too long. Right? No, no, no. I could see that happening. Let's talk about you. Okay. Uh, so when you're not doing mummy stuff and when you're not doing other things, uh -huh. you do cosplay. I do. And you've got the Tom Server. You do uh, mystery science theater mm -hmm. stuff. Yep, yep. And I've the got Tom Servo. Tom Servo puppet. You left. I think it was the first time you came without Tom Servo. <laughs> yeah. You came with B9 <laughs> and not with Tom Servo. I feel like I'm betraying Tom. Uh, Tom yeah. Tom's going to watch this. He's, he's watching this now and he's probably crying. Yeah. That silly toy of yours yes. has met more famous people than I have. <laughs> no, he's got photos. You got a picture of that thing with Shatner, right? I do, yeah. Shatner's sitting in a chair. He looks like he's melting like a candle. But no, he does not look pleased. He does <laughs> he not look pleased. He doesn't know still, what it is. <laughs> you are with your thing there. Yep. And, and Shatner, you know Shatner won't sit in that chair. <laughs> no, you know, Have I you tried to get Shatner to come here? I've tried several times. I, I think it was something I said once. <laughs> what did you say? On the sh program. No, oh. I, 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 I was going to leave him alone. Once he went up to space, uh -huh. I, I thought, all right, I cannot bother this man anymore right. because he's now an actual astronaut. He's a real astronaut. You know, now. Captain Kirk was not an astronaut. No. However, William Shatner is now an astronaut. However, I don't <laughs> think uh, he doesn't have time. No. He's no, too busy. He's, he's probably planning a shuttle mission or something. <laughs> he maybe, probably is. Maybe he's going to be on the Jupiter expedition. Ooh. Right, right. A, a lost in space crossover. Maybe. Conventions. You yes. do lots of conventions. Have you done any this year? Uh, yep. I went to Stockton Con. Uh, I, mean, I love that convention. It's it, That's where I think I first met all of you guys here from Creature right, Creatures from right. the mansion. You guys were Did they Stockton do it the same place? Yeah, uh, yeah the, same right, place. Right. With yeah. a nice hotel and the, the pool and all this? Yep. That was so much fun, I, you know. It's fun, and the people there were so nice. Yeah, my friend uh, Angela was there. My friend Jeremy. They 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 were super happy to see you guys come out and hang oh, with we're, us. We're and, happy to see them. Now, yeah. was it full of the wrestling people again? Yes, there were a lot of wrestlers. What is up now. with this? I, <laughs> I think the people that run Stockton Con are big, big wrestling fans. Oh. Yeah, so they always right, have wrestlers, right. and, and then they scatter some celebrities in there, you know. Right. Yeah. Right. No, no, no. Because I've been to many conventions. I've never seen. Professional wrestlers. Yeah, they don't typically have them in the no, conventions. No, and it's an odd bunch because, you know, <laughs> typically you go to, like, a famous person's booth. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, hello, would you like me to sign something? And you go to a, a professional wrestler's booth and he's like, what are you looking at? <laughs> yeah. No, it's true. I, I went up and I was going to say hello. And he said, this man showed me his muscles and puffed up his chest. I thought I'd done something wrong. <laughs> But apparently it's it's a joke. I think it's just their uh, their sort of persona. They have to look like they're ready to, you know, kill you at any time. That's right. No, yeah. no, it's 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 their motif. Their motif. Their motif. That's it. Ed Begley Jr. Yes. What I, about him? Uh, I've always been a fan of Ed Begley Jr. I used to watch St. Elsewhere back in the day. And right. He was even on Star Trek. And I'd always wanted to meet the gentleman. And on Stockton Con, um, he was there. And I got to finally How meet wonderful. him. How wonderful. Super, super sweet, nice guy. Right. Um, you know, uh, he was also in uh, Better Call Saul. That's he right. Played now, Clifford I like Bain. that show. Right. And, uh, and I got to meet him the day before that finale. 
And, oh, uh, and wow. I asked him if he knew anything was going to happen. He said, no, they didn't tell us. I have to, no. I have to watch just like you guys. Well, you know, and I, I think his character would, did not demand something in the finale finale. Right? That's true. They kind right. of no. yeah, veered off uh, right. in a different time zone. In that. No, but he did well in that because typically mm -hmm. he plays you know, a somewhat manic character. Yeah. And in this one, he was like a regular guy. He was just a regular lawyer. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This is such a thing. Well, as regular as lawyers can be. Right, right. All right, what do you say we get back to this film? Okay. All right, off yeah. we go. Back to the Pharaoh's Curse. Don't go away. I know we're boring, but the movie's all right. Hello, this is Mr. Livingston. It would appear I have been tasked with requesting you to help our show financially by visiting our patron page. Your generosity will help us keep Creature Features on the air. With only a few dollars a month from you, your kindness will allow us to continue creating new entertainment for your viewing pleasure each and every week. And if you have the desire to give more, you might even receive a gift from Tangela. I think not. Please visit the website below to learn more. Thank you. Red shirt, a Star Trek red shirt. Oh boy, thanks. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Uh, stay tuned. Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Larry Lee Moniz, expert on this film. I, I don't understand this whole spirit of the goddess priestess going into the... Yeah, usually like the old Universal movies, it was about the creatures coming to life and trying to find like a you know princess bride. Right. And, and in this movie, it's the, uh, it's the high priestess trying to take over bodies. Oh, and, all right. Yeah. So it's almost, like, it's almost like The Exorcist in a way, <laughs> but oh. done in ancient Egypt. Yeah. Um, that sounds like a really nice spin, yeah. Let's, it is, uh, <laughs> no, it is a nice That makes spin. it sound good. Well, you know, we're lucky to have an expert on this because, you know, I, you, you run the fan club and you've got the website and all that for this um, movie. Um, no, not that one. I, I yeah. don't have a website have for I that. Have I mistaken you for someone else? Um, I have a website. Oh, well, I would hope you have a website. What's your website? Well, my website is, is BayAreaRetroDesigns.com. BayAreaRetroDesigns.com. Yes. 
Uh -huh. I, don't, I don't know if I have enough screen space for that long <laughs> euro. So what do you do there? Well, um, I'm uh, selling t-shirt designs and, uh, you know, mo mostly Bay Area kind of centric t-shirt designs, right. like, you know, uh, defunct radio stations. Oh, and nice. Things like that. I, like I their logo? The, the logos, yeah. Oh, how fun. Yeah. And then what about this one? Oh, uh, well, there's this one's, uh, you know... Uh, Kind oh, of a famous show uh, with a, a gentleman you might be familiar with. That's a good one. Yeah. No, no, that's a, so you one can go to there mm -hmm. and buy this and buy shirt. This shirt and all and kinds any of other size, things. any size, different colors, different yeah. colors. Mm -hmm. What other color would you want? That I think black is perfect. Uh, most of my designs are kind of made for black or dark right. shirts. You know, no. but, but if they want well, a navy or dark red, or can something. you imagine the maniac who would order a white shirt? <laughs> With the white artwork, <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> I've seen it too, no, actually. So, so in in that defense, though, yes. we made one at one time. It was called Black on Black. It was the Creature Feature logo. I've seen that shirt. And it was the black logo on a black shirt, and it came out nice it because did. it wasn't like, oh, look at me. <laughs> you know, it's like you, you could not see it until you were close, and it's like, oh, look. Yep. So there is there is some 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 function for that. All right. So other things as well. You did. Uh, I seem to remember you doing something for coffee, did you not? No? Oh, yeah. I, uh, I did a, uh, <laughs> I made a TV20, uh, I love TV20 bumper sticker replica. Oh, that's what, because they're gone now. Coffee is like gone. It's, it's gone. Uh, no what is coffee. it? Uh, it's like Grit TV. Mrs. Olsen took the Folgers and left with all the coffee. <laughs> No, no, no. That was our that was our, our main television station yeah. for quite a few years. It was. And now it's a Western. Yeah, all Western grit, all the time. Grit TV. Grit. You know, I, I like Westerns, but I don't like them 24 hours a day. Yeah, my yeah. dad loves him. Yeah, he, he watches that channel uh, all the time, and it's like... Well, you know, I, I, I don't blame your father, because he... What's the alternative? Watch our show? Forget it. <laughs> he, might, he might watch... He might watch, watch the episodes you're on. Mr. Moniz, I'm saying hello. You got a Hi, good, Dad. You got a good kid here. All right, so you do those shirts. Anything else? Uh, maybe like coffee cups or something uh, like yeah, that? Coffee oh, yeah, coffee cups. coffee cup. Coffee with a coffee logo. K-O-F-Y cup. Brilliant. I'm royalties. I'm I see royalty. I see a royalty <laughs> check in my future. Kick a few dollars to you yeah, for that I'm not one. going to do that. <laughs> All right, what do you say, Larry? Should we wrap up this film and call it a night? I think we should, yeah. Let's do it. All right, All right. we're going to close up this film, Pharaoh's Curse. And uh, when we come back, I think we're going to have Tangella with us. Cool. We'll see. So uh, don't go away after the credits roll because we're going to be back. See you soon. I imagine you are becoming almost as tired of seeing me as I am of making these messages. Please subscribe. And so falls the sarcophagus lid on the Pharaoh's curse. What do you think of this movie? All right. Well, you know, at least it was short, like you. She does not like the short jokes. But you know what? She's, she's tall in her own way. This yeah. is true. She can, she can reach Andrew's head. <laughs> and she smacks him all the time. And was this your choice tonight to put this on the table? Yeah, she's, she's been decorating my tables for me. Uh, we, we had a complaint or two saying, oh, where, where, what happened to the skull with the candle? Yeah, where's the skull with the candle? Ah. It's in a bloody room now. Oh, it's it's so, a skull. Where no, else no, would no, I scold her every day because there's no more skull with a candle and she puts something else. She'll go someplace in the manor and find the thing and put it there. And that's, that's my skull with the candle. So this is, this is my life. I, you know, it's not what it's, it's, it's people think it is, I think. Anyways, you like the movie? You know, yeah, mostly I liked it, yeah. I well, think. you know, I think, I think it was smart of them to seal it up so yes. that this curse does not take place again. But, you know, they should do a, a sequel 
like modern day where like in the future from this movie, somebody digs a hole in the same place and the whole thing starts all over again. <laughs> and they use the same script, same story, everything happens again. It's like deja vu. Mm-hmm. The Pharaoh's deja vu. Anyway, so so what's up next for you, Mr. Larry? Doing exciting things? Um, you know, just gonna do some Comic Con things, and uh, I might be getting ready to move, you know, soon. Getting to ready place. to move. Yep. Where would yep. you go? Uh, Visalia, believe it or not. Oh, I like Visalia. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they grow uh, citrus. They do. They have a Visalia. lot of. Visalia. Uh, yes. They have a well, lot of. Farms you would still there. visit us, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, so I could ring you and go, Larry. I need you to be a guest on the show, and I need five dozen oranges. And you can make it happen, right? I could do that. No, and Finally, we, uh, I can bring the oranges. Some, some tomato, perhaps? <laughs> no. You know, California is the breadbasket of the world. Really? No. I, I think it's the breadbasket of, like, some grocery stores, not the entire world. There's a no. breadbasket involved, though. It's true. It's true. I don't know. Anyways, what do we got going on? Fun stuff? We got a movie on next Friday we're going to do something fun there and we're gonna have something else next week we're gonna have some somebody else besides larry next week mm. who's gonna to top larry <laughs> <Don't know. laughs> now she peeks at the schedule you know because he livingston won't let me see the schedule really but no no no. but she'll, she'll, will. she'll show it to me i can see it yeah. all right well i think that's it for tonight right that's it thank you larry for coming you're the best thank you for having thanks me. thanks for bringing the little robot and uh <laughs> keeping us up to speed on the pharaoh's curse and as Anytime. far as you guys go thank you so much for watching our show we know you could have been watching that that saturday night live program but uh we we discussed that and we know why you're watching us instead and uh we will see you next friday we'll see you next saturday and don't forget we love you see you next time so larry you know, I'm thinking with this thing you're doing, it, perhaps you should have like, you know, all creature feature stuff. Well, I mean, I kind of only do retro stuff. Maybe when you're finally off the air. <laughs>